This video is going to be about monopoly and taxes. We're going to look at a monopoly with a sales tax and then a monopoly with a lump sum tax. Here is the monopolist inverse market demand and the monopolist costs function. Case one, we're going to do no sales tax. So revenue is price times quantity, where price is given by 50 minus 0.05 Q, and that's all multiplied by Q, so price times quantity. And they're uh, simplifying here, we get 50 Q minus 0.05 Q squared. Profit is going to be revenue minus cost. So I'm going to plug in my revenue equation, and then we're going to plug in our cost equation. We're going to subtract out the $10 of fixed cost and subtract out the 2 times Q, which represents the variable cost. We're going to take the derivative of the profit equation with respect to Q output. So the derivative of 50Q is 50. The derivative of minus 0.05Q squared is minus 0.1Q and the derivative of minus 10 is 0, and the derivative of minus 2q is just minus 2, and we're maximizing, so we're setting this result equal to 0. So our last result here, now we're going to solve this equation for q. So 50 minus 2 is 48, and then dividing through by 0 0.1, the profit maximizing output level is 480, and to get the price, we're going to plug this 480 back into the inverse market demand, the equation we saw on the first slide, and we get a profit maximizing price of $26 per unit. The total profit is just going to be revenue minus cost. So revenue here we can just think of as price times quantity. The $26 price times the 480 units is the revenue. And then we subtract out the cost, and here we're evaluating the cost uh, at 480 units. So that is the firm's profit. Now let's go to case two where we place a 20% tax on the firm's revenue. So revenue in this case will be given by 1 minus S, where S is a sales tax, multiplied by P times Q, which is revenue. So setting that up, we saw revenue. Our revenue equation from before was 50Q minus 0.5Q squared. And S here is going to be 0.2. So 1 minus 0.2 is where this 0.8 is coming about. So that is our revenue uh, in the face of a sales tax. So profit is going to be revenue minus total cost. And as before, we're going to take the derivative of the profit equation with respect to the quantity of output. And so the derivative of what's in parentheses is given by 50 minus 0.1Q. And the derivative of minus 2Q once again is minus 2. And we're going to solve this for Q. So 0.8 times 50 is 40. 0.8 times 0.1 is 0.08 Q. And just solving for Q. Uh, the profit maximizing output here is lower than before. It's now 475. And to get the profit maximizing price under a under sales tax, plug in that Q equals 475 into the uh, demand curve and we get a price of $26.25. The firm's profit is going to be its revenue, which is being taxed here, minus the cost. And so substituting everything we know in here, the sales tax is 0.2, so 1 minus 0.2 is 0 0.8. The price is 26.25, the quantity 475, and we get a lower profit here of $9,015. And notice here the government tax revenue, the amount of revenue that the government is collecting from the sales tax, is going to be 20% of the firm's revenue. So in this case, it's uh, almost $2,500. All right, in case three, let's say the government puts a lump sum tax of $2,493.75 on the firm. This was the amount raised under the sales tax. So we're not going to have a sales tax. We're just going to implement a lump sum tax, which equals the amount of revenue collected under the sales tax. So our profit equation is total revenue minus total cost minus this lump sum tax. We can think of this lump sum tax as a basically a fixed cost here. So maximizing profit, we're going to take the derivative of this profit function with respect to Q, and we get this result. Uh, we're going to solve for Q, and we get 480 units. And as for the price, we get a price of $26. And the profit here, 
once we subtract out the lump sum tax, profit is going to be $9,016.25. So note here that the price and output level under this lump sum tax is the same in our no tax case. In our first case that we did in this video, we found a price of $26 and an output of $480. So the lump sum tax does not change the profit maximizing price or output level. Another thing to notice here is that the profit with the sales tax was actually lower than the profit under the lump sum tax, despite both taxes raising the same amount of tax revenue. Also notice that the price with the sales tax was higher compared to the price with the lump sum tax, so consumers are paying more. And in terms of the output, the output is lower under the sales tax. It was 475, and with the lump sum tax, it's 480. So to sum up then, the government collected the same amount of revenue in each case. However, consumers paid a lower price and bought more output under the lump sum tax. Firm, the firm, the monopolist, had a higher profit under the lump sum tax. So it's usually argued then that a lump sum tax is preferred to a sales tax, all else being equal. Okay, I'll stop here.